The velocity saturation model is valid for moderately small transistors. For really small transistors, something unexpected starts to happen. So uh, the velocity saturation model for, uh, for current in a MOSFET is uh, a very valid model for transistors down to chain length about 90 nanometers. For deep submicron or uh, below 90 nanometers, we start to see something a little bit strange. We start to see current values above the current values we expect to see. So if you use the velocity saturation uh, model, um, it gives you a current that is smaller than the, current, the saturation current you measure, which indicates that charges are definitely moving faster than the uh, saturation velocity. So perhaps maybe this is because um, Vn is a function of L, maybe, right? If, if, if the saturation velocity increases as chain length decreases, this could explain this phenomenon. But the fact of the matter is the uh, saturation velocity of electrons and holes in silicon is surprisingly constant and is not a function of channel length. So this doesn't explain the phenomenon that we are seeing. Uh, to be very specific, the phenomenon we are seeing is Let's say that this is L decreasing, channel length decreasing, and this is saturation current. Of course, of course, you would expect to see current decreasing as the channel uh, shrinks. This makes complete sense. Everybody expects this. But what happens is that you see the current decreasing, but it's not decreasing at the rate that you expect. There's a gap here. The current is a lot larger than you would expect. And so there's something happening that frees uh, electrons from the constraints of saturation velocity. So this is obviously happening. Charges are moving faster than saturation velocity. And this phenomenon is called a velocity overshoot. And the uh, channel and the current model that results from velocity overshoot is actually the current model that you should use for most modern transistors. So to understand velocity overshoot, we have to uh, understand how velocity saturation occurs in the first place. So velocity saturation happens because you have an electron. Of course, any discussion that we have about electrons is going to apply uh, similarly to holes. But you have an electron, and this electron is moving under the effect of an electric field. However, it's not moving through vacuum. It's moving through a crystal. And this is a crystal of silicon. And so this crystal of silicon is composed of atoms, of silicon atoms. And these silicon atoms form covalent bonds with each other. And we discussed this in detail. Now, because, the, uh, because there's an electric field across the channel, the electron moves. This is drift, drift velocity. And the, uh, we are measuring a drift current. But the, the electron itself is also charged. And so it also creates an electric field around it. So there's an electric field around the electron itself. And this electric field impacts silicon atoms through which the uh, electron is moving. Now, silicon atoms com are composed of uh, nuclei, which contain positive charges, and electrons, which are negative charges. Right? And so as the electron moves through the crystal atom, it imposes an electric field that affects the silicon atoms, and it affects the protons in the nucleus differently from the way it affects the electrons uh, in the outer shells. And what it does is it causes a, a slight deformity in the silicon atoms. This is very similar to electric displacement, which happens when a, uh, an insulator or a dielectric is exposed to an electric field because silicon actually is, um, behaves like an insulator in some ways and like a conductor in some other ways. So you see a deformity in all these silicon atoms. The faster the electron moves, the more atoms it affects simultaneously. And so if it's moving slow, uh, it's only affecting those, electron, the, those atoms that are near it. But if it's moving fast, then it has an accumulated effect on uh, more and more uh, atoms as it moves through the crystal. When it, it moves uh, very fast, it builds up so much tension in the silicon crystal that uh, it cannot be supported any longer. Nobody, uh, the silicon uh, crystal is not going to allow it to move any faster.
And what happens is that the silicon crystal will force the electron to stop moving completely, to come to a complete standstill. All the kinetic energy that was contained in the electron is given off in the form of heat, uh, in the form of a phonon, which is a quantum of vibration. And uh, the electron can then start moving again from, uh, from a rest until it attains this maximum velocity again. And so that's why there's only a maximum velocity that electrons reach. It's not a maximum instantaneous velocity, it's a maximum average velocity through the crystal. The problem is this phenomenon of you know building up uh, a lot of tension through the crystal needs the electron to move through a specific minimum length. If the electron moves through a smaller, shorter length than this specific minimum length, it doesn't have enough time and distance to register this kind of, of to build up enough, um, enough dipole moments to uh, be able to give off, off the energy as a phonon. And so what is this minimum length? It's um, pretty much um, related to the mean free path of uh, electrons in the silicon atom. And so uh, for modern channel length, they are actually uh, significantly shorter than this minimum length. And so electrons can come out of the source and reach the drain without ever actually registering uh, any kind of velocity saturation through the crystal. There's not enough time, uh, there's not enough distance actually for this to happen. And so this means that the electron is freed from its uh, velocity saturation constraints. We should have seen, if this is the case, we should then see electrons moving as fast as they would if that the transistor was uh, pinch off saturated. So we should see the current becoming quadratic again. But the reality of the matter is the current is still linear under the saturation regime. So why is that? Because there's another limit on velocity that the electrons will hit really quick. And that limit is thermal velocity. So the velocity of electrons will then be limited to thermal velocity and all electrons will move at thermal velocity. So what's happening here is that electrons are emitted from the source and they are emitted at the maximum speed that they could actually be emitted at, which is thermal velocity. And then they move through the channel and they reach the drain and they are moving as fast as they, as they could possibly move. So what, what's the expression of current in this case? We call this uh, overshoot current. Um, now, any current through the channel is going to be minus W times Q, uh, the inversion charge, times the velocity at which, at which the charge moves. So inversion charge more or less doesn't change its uh, minus C oxide into VGS minus V threshold. This is the amount of charge coupled to the channel through the gate capacitance. And so uh, the uh, saturation current in this case is gonna be C oxide into VGS minus V threshold and W is also gonna figure here. But uh, what is the velocity at which the, channel, the charges are moving? And the velocity is of course, V thermal. But there's one thing, this is not V thermal, this should be V thermal over two. So it's 0.5 V thermal. Why? Uh, because while the source is gonna uh, emit all electrons at thermal velocity, it's also emitting them as Gaussian, uh, in, as a Gaussian distribution because we know that thermal velocity has zero mean. So only half of the electrons would actually be emitted into the channel. The other half is gonna be emitted back into the source uh, in the negative direction. And so we have to divide by two here. And so this is the current expression under uh, velocity overshoot.